What's up, everybody? Sven Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're going to be tying up the Moorish Mouse. This is a very effective pattern, simple, not a lot of materials. So let's go through the material list uh, first. We're going to start with a hook that has a big gap. Uh, this is a TMC 8089. This is a size 2. I typically fish these in 2, 4, and 6s. Um, I've tried them in 8s but haven't had as good of luck. Um, we're going to be using a uni thread and a 6 aught. You could also use a GSP. I recommend black on this. Um, we're going to be using some 4 millimeter foam uh, in the color black. I've also used tan. Um, that's pretty much the only two colors I've used. Uh, also brown. Uh, you're going to need some 20 or 30 pound mono. This is just for a little trick for the tail. Not necessary if you don't need it. Uh, but it's something I like to do with any of my rabbit tails. We're going to be using some natural deer hair from uh, Rocky Mountain Dubbing. This is a really good patch, really dense, uh, thick hair, and I really like the color on it as well. And then we're going to match it with some uh, black barred uh, grizzly uh, uh, rabbit strips from uh, Hairline Dubbing. And uh, make sure you got some sort of uh, cement. Uh, this is Fly Tire Z Cement, and we're going to be using some uh, Loon Thin. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is a pattern by uh, Ken Morish. Um, the Morish mouth has been used for, you know, pike, uh, uh, bass. Uh, I typically use it for trout. I know it's uh, very well known in Alaska. But let's go ahead and get started with this. And I believe I'm following pretty much his uh, original instructions, but maybe making a few different tweaks on my end. I'm going to start my thread right here at the back of the the hook shank here, or right at the bend, and just lay down a nice little thread base. I don't want to get too much thread on the hook shank uh, because we're going to be doing a little bit of spinning on the deer hair. And the first material we're going to be tying in is this uh, 20 or 30 pound mono, whatever you have laying around. And we're going to cut off about a 4 to 6 inch piece depending on how long you like your tails. And this is just a little trick I use to help prevent fouling. Um, there's no structural or strength um, necessary for this to be tied in with a lot of glue. It's just basically to help the tail to prevent it from fouling. And we're going to cut off a, a, a strip of this rabbit uh, strip. And we want it to be about two, one and a half to two times the length of the shank. Sometimes I like to do them a little longer, sometimes a little shorter, depending on where I'm fishing them. But a general guideline would be one and a half to two times the length of the shank. And then I'm going to uh, trim this off. If you're really skilled, you can uh, pull it off the hide. Uh, we don't want to pull it all off. We want to leave a little bit for the tail. But my experience is I'll start ripping it as I'm working my way down. And then all of a sudden I pull a little too hard and rip the strip in half. And then I got to start over. So I just get in the habit now of, of cutting these and you can see how I bend it around my finger to get those hairs off and I leave a little bit there um, which you know you could get it right down to the height if you want but I like to just leave a little bit of hair and that's just a personal preference so there we go we've got um, a little bit left there on the tail um, that looks pretty good to me you can strip off that fluff right there for the tying point but I just tie mine in and I want to get about a quarter of an inch here to really kind of grip down and I'm going to now use some cranking wraps and work my way back to about three-eighths of that uh, hide um, being tied in right there on that thread base. So we got a really good tail there and now I'm going to show you my trick here with the, the mono. Uh, what we're going to do is take your bodkin and I'll turn it so you can see the hide and I'm going to divide the length of the tail in half and then I'll poke a hole right there. And this doesn't, I've never had an experience where this ruins the integrity or strength of the tail. Um, even using just a regular rabbit strip, um, you know, magnum for sure you won't have an issue. But uh, all you do is put the mono through there, create a little mono loop through that tail, do a nice uh, two, three wraps, and then pull it tight so it's, you know, all your slacks out. And then I loosen it just a little bit. So you can see it still has a little bit of a loop. And what this does is it prevents uh, fouling, um, you know, the, the tail actually kind of naturally wants to go back now and uh, that's my biggest thing is the fouling so but it doesn't provide any structural integrity so no need to use glue now for the foam I basically just insert my foam on the side there and you can see it gives me the uh, width of that hook gap and that's what I want to use for the head so I'll just use some scissors here and I'll cut a strip and we don't want to have this big bulky strip and you can see it measured it perfect and so I'm going to slightly taper that um, you know 
I don't really have a measuring system for the top taper. I just kind of eyeball it. But you can see how we definitely maybe halved it. And then I'll trim off that uh, half of that foam because this is four millimeter foam. And so I want to make sure that we're not creating a huge bulk spot at the back. And then I will place that on top, do one wrap right over the top, and then I'll kind of zigzag it through that, uh, that lip. And that's how I secure my foam. And I can see now, I'll check it, I can go actually one wrap back and then I'll do a double wrap right there and then I'll just kind of clean that up and that's how I tie in my foam. And when you're using this heavier thread, you don't have to worry as much about it cutting the, uh, the foam itself, um, especially when we've got four millimeter. If you do two millimeter, I'd be a little hesitant to really crank, but um, just make sure you're using some good foam. Well, we are well into this now, and so the next step is going to be getting some deer hair. Now, this is going to be a mess, so make sure you got a vacuum handy if your wife's particular about your tying area like mine is. And we are going to be getting deer hair kind of everywhere. But luckily, this generally falls right beneath your vise. You don't have to worry about it getting everywhere. We're not going to be using razors and shaping heads. But what I do is I've got a clump here about the size of a, a um, you know a big pen I'll clean out most of the fluff uh, it doesn't have to be super clean this is kind of a rougher pattern in my opinion you don't have to you know you could taper the the deer hair put it in a hair uh, uh, sorry stack it you could put it in a hair stacker but I like to leave it a little bit more rough and I just measure I want that deer hair coming off about a little bit past where the foam is and then I'll just trim these butt ends so I've got a little bit to tie it in but you don't want to have those uh, butt ends too long, otherwise it messes up your, you know, what we're going to be creating. And so I'll tie it in with about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, and then I'll really crank on it to to fluff it as I secure that. And then for this, I'm going to actually walk it underneath. So I'm keeping tension on my bobbin and thread, and I'm just wrapping that around, twisting that around so it's on the underside. And then we're going to stack a, a piece on top. Uh, you could spin it um, on this first section, but what I, I just really like to make sure you give a nice tight wrap right there after you get it where you want it. Um, I like to walk it around because it, it, it doesn't get in the way of that foam that we tied in, and that is just how I've always done it. And we're going to lay another stack right here on top and, and match those tips so they align. So grab a similar size clump and a ballpoint, uh, uh, a big pen size, and then we'll clean the the fluff out. Uh, any weird or in, you know hairs that don't you don't like, just pick out, and you can uh, line those tips up. Like I said, you can put this in a hair stacker, but I like to leave it a little bit rougher. Um, you know that also depends on what uh, your deer hair looks like if they are naturally kind of aligned in the beginning or not. And uh, we'll do the same process: two wraps, and then I'll kind of pinch it right here on the sides as I pull tight. And that way it just cinches it right down on top of our piece that we spun onto the bottom. Then I'll do a couple wraps just to secure it. I like it. And so I'll work my, my thread up through that, uh, that uh, kind of clump ball, the butt ends we have there. And then I'm going to do a uh, whip finish. You could also do a half, a half hitch just to secure this in. And then I'll pull tight as I push back. And every time you push back, you want to make sure you pull your thread tight again. And there we go, we've got our, our, our foundation of what we're going to be building up. And so I'll work my thread up just a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to space out. And you can go with, uh, you know, big pens are sufficient. I like to go a little thicker, almost Sharpie size for these next uh, three stacks we're gonna be doing. Just because it, it one, it will create uh, a more dense body which could be a negative thing, but I, I like to have more deer hair um, than, you know, having it be too sparse. It helps it float a little bit, also makes it look a little meatier, and so more maybe more appetizing. But we'll do the same process, measure so that those tips are kind of um, tapering as we go back, and then I will take it and pinch it right here on top, and we'll do two loose wraps, um, right there where our thread was and then on the third wrap I'll crank down notice how I hold the the tips Keep a hold of those you want those tips on top You don't want those right into the bottom and then I push it back and pull you can see I got a little bit of thread slack out of there and then I'll work my thread up I'll do another whip finish and Just kind of checking I want to see yep. We're getting pretty thick up there That is going to be a nice meaty snack 
So um, I'll do a whip finish just to secure that. You could also do a half hitch. And um, something I think I forgot to do on the last one is I generally love to put a little bit of uh, uh, super glue on each of these uh, knots just to make it a little bit more durable. And so we'll go ahead and do that uh, now. You just you can use a UV resin as well, or, or you know some sort of head cement, just something to keep that deer hair and that knot secure. So let's do the same thing and just try to grab about the same amount of a clump. Um, you you'll notice if you grab it with like a triangle in between your 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 thumb and your first two fingers, that helps to gauge it. So you know, you know, you can be as consistent. The other option is you can lay them all out and count all the hairs. That way you know you're for sure accurate, but very unnecessary. And we'll go ahead and just same process, uh, clean out the under fur, um, take any that you don't like. We'll measure it to see that they are going to be tapering into um, the hairs that we have previously stacked. I'll cut off those butt ends because you don't want those getting into the what would be I guess considered the the body of the mouse but the wings I just pr pretty much want them for the underbody and then we'll do two wraps crank down do a third wrap work our way up through kind of splay it push it back after you push it back give it a nice pull making sure you got that nice and tight and then we'll do a uh, a knot whether it's a whip finish or a half hitch and then slide your knot back into that and we are already almost done so bear with me and we'll do one more and on this last stack it's a little bit tricky with that eye but we have plenty of room right there and I'll just put down a little bit of cement on that and if you're doing this is about the same speed I'm doing it you'll notice that that glue does not affect you know you're not gonna have deer hair getting uh, stuck to it because by the time we get it cut and cleaned it's already uh, pretty much dry. I'm not putting a huge glob on there. And that's the difference between using like a super glue gel and a super glue. You wanna make sure you're using something that's quick drying. Now, um, this last one is going to be a little bit more tricky because we got that hook eye. So you really need to be mindful of that because we don't want that uh, getting um, a lot of hair covering that hook eye. The last thing you wanna do is be out and you know night fishing this and you can't figure out how to get your uh, tippet uh, through or your leader through the eye because it's uh, fouled with deer hair or uh, resin. So be very mindful of that and we'll do the same process, two to three loose wraps, crank down as you hold that, um, the, the tips up on top, kind of work our way back and we are ready to finish this fly. So. I'm kind of building up a little bit of a thread in front of there and I'm not going to do a half hitch at this point or a uh, or glue it because we're going to be laying down some foam and resin so grab a bodkin now and you just want to split this kind of eyeing where your shank would be and I'm just going to part this deer hair right down the middle similar to the the popular hairstyle in the 90s you know uh, I call it the butt crack hairstyle so just part it down the middle pull your foam up and over and you can see how it's kind of humped that means we've got plenty of deer hair this might actually be a little bit too much of deer hair and so you uh, I'm going to pull it a little bit tight and then we're going to keep it in position I'm going to do two loose wraps right there behind the hook eye and we'll on the third I'll kind of crank down and we are secure so make sure we're, you know we kind of like that profile. It looks really good to me. I can brush out if we got any uh, trapped hairs. Um, this one actually looks really clean. These these deer hair was really nice to work with, and so that looks really good. We just have some trimming to do, and so I'll, I'll hold up this 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 what would be considered the mouse's head. Um, I call it the water pusher because it creates you know a, a pop and a splash as it as you strip it in. And we'll build up a little bit of a hump there and then do a, a three-turn whip finish right there underneath that uh, foam right behind the hook guy. And we are golden. So make sure you got a nice tight knot there. We'll go ahead and trim off our, uh, our thread at this point. And uh, we want to cut this head um, a little bit shorter. I do it about there. I don't have a measuring for that. Maybe it's similar to the hook gap, but no. I just usually eyeball it maybe three times the size of the eye. And now just grab your scissors and we want to trim this belly so that it's uh, as 
flat as we can get it. And we want this to be uh, something that we're going to create to create a nice splash effect. A lot of guys that I, I don't I don't mouse as much as uh, some people I fish with. I know they, they mouse a lot more than me do, or I do. But uh, I know that one of the more effective uh, things for night fishing is that splash as this hits the water. And we're using deer hair and foam, and so there's not a lot of weight. Um, that's one of the advantages to using a rabbit for the body. But we want to create a splash. And one way that I found to do that is, you know, I'm going to show you here in a second, but... We want to make sure that this is as flat as we can get it and what we're going to do is we're going to resin the whole underbody and that way with a lighter fly as it hits it's going to create a an effect a, a splash it's not going to be as loud as a as a you know a heavier fly but just take some uh, thin resin here and i'm putting down a generous amount avoid that hook eye and just put it down you know you can see I've, i did about two heavy beads down this and then I'll grab my bodkin and kind of just work it in and that way we're getting it into the fibers we're getting it uh, creating a nice flat effect here and I'm pushing it over to the sides which also will help kind of keep those deer hairs sticking out but this also is increasing the durability because this you know it is thin but it is soaking in down to the core right now as you work it around and so we're protecting our thread wraps and uh, making it a little bit more durable. But by doing this and curing it, and you can see we got it nice and flat there. Um, as this hits the water, it's going to that that solid piece of resin it creates a, a little bit of a splash, which I've had uh, trout come up and hit this, you know, right on, you know, landing. So those are always the fun ones. And so. Well, make sure you cure that with the UV resin, um, 15 to 20 seconds, and uh, that, that pretty much is the Moorish Mouse. So, you know, you can vary the colors depending on whether you're fishing it at day or night, more effective at night. And, uh, yeah, that is a super effective pattern for trout and uh, for uh, uh, bass or, or muskie. So go ahead and tie some up. Thanks for watching, and hope they catch some fish.